Welcome to St. Jude Parish. If you are new to our parish or if you are here visiting us and you would like to be recognized, please stand so we can welcome you. Our priest for this morning's Mass is our pastor, Father Andrew Semler, and assisting him is Deacon Ken Stepanitis. Our opening hymn can be found in your hymnals number 453 at the Lamb's High Feast, number 453. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So today we do continue to celebrate in the Easter season, and today is called Good Shepherd Sunday. As we prepare to give worship to our Lord, who is the Good Shepherd. Let us prepare our hearts by recalling to mind our sins, asking the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, 
through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. So at this time I invite our children to come forward for the liturgy of word for children. All right, so I mentioned that today is Good Shepherd Sunday. So Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd, meaning that he cares for his flock, which is us. So may you know that God cares for you and his love for you. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. 
The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So over the past three Sundays of Easter, we've been talking about how Jesus appeared to his disciples, to his apostles. And as he was appearing to them, slowly but surely these disciples, these followers of Jesus began to understand that what he was telling them was the truth. Jesus had told them that he would rise after three days. And they didn't understand that, and they were scared. And they were afraid to come out into the world because they thought they would suffer the same fate. But Jesus appears, and they began to understand what it was that Jesus was trying to tell them. Well, as we continue through the rest of this Easter season, we're going to be focusing on our relationship with God, with Jesus, 
And so, for the next several Sundays, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what does this relationship look like with Jesus? What does it look like with God and Father, the Holy Spirit? When I was young, about seven or eight years old, my mom got a divorce. And after she divorced, we lived with my grandmother for a little while. And in my grandmother's house, I don't know if it was in the living room or the dining room, there was a picture up on the wall that I connected with. I remember this picture vividly. The one you see up here is just an AI generation of something that I thought it was. I told the AI, give me this picture and that's what you got. And I remember thinking to myself, there's Jesus with the lambs and this little boy kind of at the lap of Jesus. And I kind of projected myself into that picture. It gave me comfort. It gave me an understanding of who Jesus was. But there were times when my mom would tell me to go upstairs to my grandmother's room. Maybe to go look for something or wake grandma up or... And when I would go up there, I would be afraid. I wasn't afraid of my grandmother, don't get me wrong. But what was hanging above the headboard of her bed was a crucifix. And this crucifix, to me, was quite large. It was probably about three feet tall. And Jesus, of course, was hanging there, but it had on there painted drips of blood on his hands and his feet and his side. And what was really weird was he had blue eyes and he kind of looked at you. And <laughs> it was a little bit unnerving. And so as a child, I had this difference of opinion, this conflict that was in me. Was Jesus this shepherd, this person around the lambs and the little boy or was Jesus this person up on the cross and if he was Jesus on the cross why did he deserve what he got why was he hanging on the cross why was he suffering it didn't make any sense to me well some of the readings today well actually all the readings talk to us a little bit about this relationship that we have with Jesus and will help us come to this conclusion of why we can have a picture of these lambs and then of course the crucifix. In first Peter, I'm sorry, in our first reading, Peter talks about a cornerstone rejected. And so one of the things we can look at in terms of our relationship is this cornerstone and it's a metaphor. Back in those days they would use cornerstones to determine the location of a building, Uh, the foundation of the building, and then the direction from which that building would go from that cornerstone. So it established something about the direction and the stability of the building. And we're being asked to see Jesus as a cornerstone in our own lives so Jesus can set our stability and our direction in our lives. And of course, we see the gospel today talking about the Good Shepherd, And it's not a shepherd like a shepherd that's hired where the hired shepherd doesn't really care for the flock. He's only concerned about what he's going to get paid at the end of the day. This was a a different kind of shepherd. A shepherd that looked after a sheep and was willing to die for his sheep. Wanted so much that any problems that came about, any thing that might have harmed the sheep, that he would take care of that to the point of death. And we're asked to see Jesus as that kind of person. You know, when I was seven or eight years old, having that, those two images in my mind didn't, didn't make much sense. But what I want to focus on today is our second reading from 1 John. In that second reading, it says that what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called children of God. Okay, so I was a child back then. 
In my understanding, God was more like a tyrant. I may have told you this before, but I remember often when I would do something wrong and suffer the consequences, my mom would say something like, see, God punishes. And I thought to myself, well, <laughs> that's kind of what God is. Somebody who told us what to do, and if we didn't do it, then we would be punished for it. So I certainly didn't see my relationship in terms of both the good shepherd and Jesus hanging on the cross. Now, I loved my mom. She was a wonderful mom. But I wonder what her conception of God was. And maybe she passed on her understanding of God to me. In the catechism, it talks about our baptism. It says this about our baptism. It says, baptism not only purifies from all sins, but also makes us a new creature, an adopted son or daughter of God who has become a partaker of divine nature, member of Christ, co-heir with him, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that the catechism calls us co-heirs. Because if we're sons and daughters, I mean, not just children, not children like a group of people that might be in a school where the principal says, these are my children. No, that's not the kind of child we're talking about. We're talking about a child like a son or a daughter. Like, as a child, I didn't, could never understand that the father, somebody who I couldn't see, Jesus, who wasn't here present, could possibly be a parent. A father? My mom and dad was here. That didn't make any sense. So when the catechism talks about co-heirs, what the catechism is talking about is that we inherit everything that Jesus inherits. We are a son or a daughter like Jesus is a son of the Father. We inherit the resurrection. We inherit heaven. We inherit the love of the Father. The kind of love that is willing to die for us. It's a paradox. It's kind of a mystery, really. This Easter season is more than just celebrating Jesus' resurrection. It's a time where we really need to think deeply about our relationship with God. I mean, do you see God as a kind of hands-off, beyond-the-reach creator? Do you see God as a powerful dictator who determines the rules and punishes when you disobey? Do you see God as that possible force of the universe that really has no impact on our lives at all? Or do you see God as a lover that will do anything to show us his love for us so that we might fall in love with him. Our church is not just a gathering place. It's not just a building. It's for those who are good and those who are not so good. Our church is a living, breathing family of sons and daughters with all of life's ups and downs, people who struggle with sins and laugh and are reborn, who long to be freed from the difficulties and trials of this world. It is a family whose father wants nothing more than for all of us to come to him, to be with him in their own inheritance in heaven forever. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For all church leaders, may they place their trust in God alone and turn away from the glamour of power. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have faced the loss of a loved one, may they find hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ who will never let them be alone because he will always be at their side. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who live without food or shelter, may their needs be met through the generosity of others. Let us pray to the Lord. For all unborn children, may they be given a chance to live. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and who are dying and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, especially Joseph Nider, Frank Delgado, Felix Sontoyo, Terry Miller, Joseph Hebel Wells, Tom McCarthy, Peter Palazzoyo, and Norma Resto Flores. Let us pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the soul of Shirley Gonzalez, whom this Mass is intended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to receive the prayers that we have spoken and those that we lift up to you this day. And we ask you to receive them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. hymn number 37 in your white songbook, Here I Am to Worship, number 37. My God, from daybreak do I watch for you, and in invocation of your name will I lift up my hands.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and, and glory of his name, name for, for our good, good and the good, good of all his holy church. church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and his assistant Bishop Gregory and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Father.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he revives my soul i am the good shepherd alleluia i know my sheep and my own guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. I am the good shepherd. Alleluia, I know my sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Patria, Filia, et Spiritui Sancto, Sicura, Rad in Principia, Hallelujah. 
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated for the announcements. There is usher training this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. 
So if you'd like to be part of that, the ushers, uh, please note that training. St. Jude is hosting the St. Vincent de Paul collection truck until one o'clock today. Find the list of items you can donate on page four of this week's bulletin. For parishioners 55 and over, our monthly season saints gathering will be Tuesday. We'll meet in the reception area after the 8.30 a.m. mass for coffee, pastries, and fellowship. We are hosting two opportunities to attend a Medicare Basics educational seminar. It'll be Thursday at 3 p.m. and another session at 7 p.m. So those turning 65 coming off a company plan or need help understanding Medicare, this is information only and there's no RSVP needed. All parishioners, even those who do not have children in religious education, we want to invite you to the Great Commission, which resumes this Sunday. This is a great time of discussion and growth in your faith. The topic this week, what do you seek? Find out the times and details on page four of the bulletin. And due to the generosity of a donor, we have been able to replace our aging projectors and screens with new LED walls. This new technology helps us with videos, live streams, and other ministry needs. We'd like to thank Jack Gunn, the technology team, and the other staff who worked hard to help install those this week. All right, well, they, okay. They had, they had a little video, but I'm sure we'll see how it uh, can be used in the future. Let us stand for our final blessing. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.